two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. What? What do you want, Martin? I want to know what's on tap. God damn right. For the podcast. Do. Well, what's on tap? It's two beers. One from the UK, one from, we'll call it Denmark. But really, it's not. Let's call it Denmark. Yeah, let's call it Denmark. Uh, it, it, it is Actually, from no, the killer San Diego. Color, the color San Diego. There. So, so one from UK, one from America. Yeah. Um, not from uh, Demolin or Deproof or wherever it is that exactly McKellar um, brews from. I think it's Deproof, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Deproof yeah. makes uh, most of them. Yeah. So this is um, yeah two beers. Yeah, this is us handling the Swedish summer with two exactly. refreshing beers. And it's been a great summer. Uh, just like last summer, started a little later, yeah. but has gotten quite warm and quite pleasant and quite lovely outside. Rain, heat, rain, heat, rain, well, heat, yeah, rain, yeah, heat, yeah. rain, heat. It's, it's just, you know, that's just Sweden. Yeah. That, that summer. Yep. Yeah. Um, so you brought both of these beers and I I'm did. very happy uh, because I have never had the Arbor Sea Bond. I know. I've never even heard of... Um, Arbor. Arbor? I guess so. Uh, this is a, yeah, Arbor L's brewed in uh, Bristol. Comes in at a 4.75% for 4.7% ABV. In they, make, a f- they make a big deal out of it being 568 milliliters. Which is? One pint. Exactly. They make a big deal about it, and it's a huge can. I've never seen a can size like this. Uh, yeah, I haven't either. It's, it's is, a weird one. This is a huge can. Um, so if you see any comparison to the McKellar can in the images, it is... Which is a puny 50 centimeter can. Yeah, it is a bit of a jump. So I don't know why Arbor Seabomb is in a pint can, but maybe it's... They're compensating. It's what they need in Bristol. Yeah. All right. So let us it's jump a, into... So it's a Citra Pale Ale? That's what the label says. That's the sea bomb Yep. It's no other word that we're not supposed to say on uh, on radio. Uh, right. So we can say the other words too, but uh, we're not going to today. Canadian. Mm, it smells very citra though. I mean, it smells actually quite good. Yeah, it's, it smells. I honestly... It smells super refreshing. I had very low expectations for this beer. You did? I did. Um, I saw the can and I was like, oh, I want, I want it so bad. I know, I saw the can too. I thought this is going to be great. But at the same time, it's kind of like, oh, I don't want this one. <laughs> but it smells great. It smells very hoppy and citra and uh, it smells just... Absolutely wonderful. Fruity and, and the, fresh. And the color is... I'm going to wipe a little bit of the foam off or the condensation off the side yeah, of the glass. Yeah, you, you wipe it off. Uh, but it's actually cloudy, not like a Nipa. But, um, you know, it's... Okay, so based on... on opaque. Uh, based on historical uh, styles of beers, th- this looks crap. It, it's, it's not supposed to be this muddy... A New England IPA yeah. is like fruit juice. Uh, it did. This is a standard non-filtered beer. Yeah, I wish I wish they would take the the effort to actually filter this and make it like just as clear as possible. I think that would yeah, that would really impress me. But, Luckily, uh, I don't rate uh, appearance that highly on my uh, beer scale. Uh, I do, depending on the style. What I really like though is you just give it a little agitation. Yeah, yeah, and it just foams right up, and you get this beautiful. Just white head layer around right the top. Wow. I absolutely love that. So that gives, that's mad props for that. Yeah. Because I absolutely love that in a beer. All right, let's cheers. try it. Cheers. Yeah, it's a refreshing Honestly, beer. 4.7%, very refreshing. Yeah. I could totally down a can of a pint of this pretty easily. This is. Mm. It's lacking something. I think I think it has too much lemon. Um like a, I don't think an so. actual lemon lemonade flavor. I don't uh, find it to be that lemony. I find it to have a nice citrus aroma. For me, it's got this kind of uh tea-ish 
pale ale quality that's it. at the that's, end. That's it. That I really like. I like yeah. that in a pale ale. Um, I think this is extremely pleasant. Super easy to drink. Um, very sessionable. Uh, I could drink. I could drink quite a few of these. I enjoy all of the flavor notes that are connected to hops, mm -hmm. like the bitterness, the fruitiness. I'm not a big fan of the tea comparison, the, the yeah. tea flavors. Uh, there's a sweetness. Oh, it's it's far from a bad beer, but it's what's preventing it from being a world class beer. Oh, I mean, no, I'm not saying this is a world class beer on no, any no, level it, whatsoever. It, it, but I would say as a we'll call it a workaday beer as mm -hmm. a summer beer i think this is extremely refreshing and quite enjoyable yeah um it still has that lemonade flavor mm. but fair enough fair enough i don't i don't get lemonade off that at all you don't get lemon lemonade nope it's not just lemonade, and it's just not lemon. It's lemon lemonade. Nope, I don't get that in any way whatsoever. And you are even from the, the country of lemonade. We are. We, we pride ourselves on our lemonade. It's not, it's not quite the lemonade of the um, Frau Gruber Belgian wit, which was like pure lemonade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, maybe my... Um, that's the most lemonade -ish thing I've had recently, so maybe yes. my, my senses are skewed a little bit. Um, but I think this is uh, so much better than what I was expecting. Because I gotta say, my expectations were, were not very high for this one. I think my expectations were too high. Mm. What is it? Is it the black label with the white and, and greenish? Lettering or what? What is it that about this that excited you? Uh, new craft from England with a lot of hops, because we've had a, we've drank beer from a lot of British mm -hmm. breweries that just knock it out of the park. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm always I would say skeptical when it comes to new breweries, and because I'm always like, it's like a Pandora's box. Is yeah. it going to be all the sins of the world, or is it going to be all the pleasures of the world? Quite yes. often than not, it's mostly most of the sins of the world where you're kind of like, "Ooh, that was, that was not great." Um, the fact that it comes in a pint can actually troubled me quite a bit. Yeah, uh, because it is this oversized kind of like um, where a, a cask ale from an English. Uh, well, not like that, but pint. when I think like these kind of taller, you know, pint-sized cans, I think like mass-produced garbage like Budweiser or Heineken or something like that. Monster just, energy drink. Right, where they're just trying to like cram a bunch of shit into you as fast as possible. Yeah. So I, I was very skeptical on many levels for this one. Um, but I got to say, Arbor, I think, produced a really good quality beer. Um, and for a summer beer, I think you could really enjoy this on a hot day at the beach. You're going to have a very good time. Yeah, you can do a lot worse than this one. Well, I always hate that qualifier, which kind of means like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could do something much, much shittier than yeah. this. This is not that great, you could but be, you could do a lot, you, lot worse. You could be drinking sewage water. Right. Which would be arguably worse. I mean, you could be having a Bud Light, so it could be doing worse. <laughs> uh, but no, this is... Yep, yeah, I'm going to go with... Uh... 375. Yeah. We have a history on this show of me giving the higher ratings mm -hmm. because I'm kind of a whore yeah. uh, that likes to give it out to any brewery that just gives me attention. It's true. This is one of the few instances where I give the lower rating and I give the three point. Okay, I'll increase it to a 3.5. Thank you. That's not like you're going that much lower than me. It's. No, nominal, I, I was going a for nominal a, variety. A, a beginning of the episode, I was going for a three. Then yeah. you talked me into sensing the flavors that increased it I'm, to a three point five. I'm persuaded that way. But this is the thing with a lot of beer where I I, I try it and then I get a certain set of uh, I get a I get a sense of the beer. Yeah, you get a feel for the beer. Yeah. You get an understanding of it. And, and then someone says a flavor that I hadn't identified. Like mm -hmm. someone says, 
oh wow, it's white pepper. Mm-hmm. And I try it again, and I feel a strong presence of that flavor mm-hmm. because now I know what to look for, and I can e- more easily pick it out. So what I'm hearing is you're I'm, highly suggestible, and this is true. Easily to influence. This is this also is true. Excellent knowledge. However, we will use this to our advantage in later episodes. You probably will. <laughs> However, I've talked to other beer nerds mm-hmm. who feel the same way about particular flavors. Yeah. Where, where they might not have the, the perfect chef level uh, flavor memory. But when someone says a flavor, it's more easy to, to pick it out and uh, right, because appreciate you've, it. Right, because you've been preconditioned to look for that flavor then. Yes. So if someone's tried this like, oh, I get pear and apricot and um, and passion fruit, and you're kind of like, oh, oh, I, I, got, I got passion fruit. Because that's easy to pick out, and I got, I got uh, apricot. That's that's pretty. But the pear I missed. Yeah, I and you tried again. And you're like, oh wait, no, I get the pear now. Yeah, there's yeah. a slight sweetness. Sure. Yeah. So so yes, I mean I am highly impressionable when it comes to beer, but I'm not alone. This is right. this is a thing why you should try beer in groups. I and, agree. And, I agree. And, and and discuss what your flavor. I'm, I'm mostly tasting. giving you a hard time. I know. All right. So, uh, what I get? 3.75, 3.5. Very good, very good choice for yes. Arbor C Bomb. So, next up, we have Upstairs Downstairs from McKellar San Diego. And do you remember what was in this? It's a golden lager. Right. It definitely has some peppers, it has yeah. some lime. Yeah. It's kaffir limes. Kaffir mm-hmm. limes. Uh, some kind of pepper, uh, coriander, maybe. Is there coriander? Uh, I don't know. Ah, you need or, to tell me. I'm not going to tell you yet. All right. Ah, uh, it has many ingredients. It does. Of a varying kind. Yeah, and you're not a big fan of lagers. And golden lagers, which is basically kind of ale, um, it's kind of a splitting hairs kind of thing. Um, but yeah, this is a lot of things going for it. It smells amazing. Yeah, you definitely get the kefir lime because it's such a dominant flavor. It's hard to uh, overlook a kefir lime smell. I think I can t- uh, sense the coriander. Yeah, the coriander is actually quite strong on this, which is a bit surprising because usually coriander is not, I don't think, that present in the nose. It's no. usually more in the in the flavor. It's one of those things where it's either going to be like soapy or yes. depending on how you, you feel about coriander. Yep. Um, all right, cheers. Cheers. Mmm. It's rich. Wow. It has a thick mouthfeel for yeah. a lager. Yeah. Um, all right. Very, so, very bitter herbal floral taste. But yet there's Earth. this there's this Chardonnay flavor to it in the in the end notes. Sure. Yeah. Um, because it was aged on oak spirals, which oak is oak spirals. Yeah, which is um, very young, fresh wood. Uh, so it's long pepper, which I have no idea what long pepper is. Uh, kefir, lime, coriander, and oak spirals comes in at five point two percent. Yeah. So, Thank you for telling me. It's mean to to make me recite well, I, I, what I, I, I what, what, what I like, read from a well, can ten is, minutes ago. The question is, there's a lot of really pronounced flavors here, like coriander, yeah. kefir. Peppers. Peppers, oak. I mean, these are really dominant flavors. So then to smell it, do you still get the smell? Do you still get the flavor off of that going in blind? I would say uh, this is exceptionally complex. Yes. I mean, the note, the, the nose is... This is one of the most interesting lagers I've had in a long time. Mm-hmm. Mm. I, I think... like the... I like the the lime zestiness off of the nose. Yes. But when you drink it, you just get this rich mouthfeel that resolves into kind of almost like a, a coconutty, buttery, chardonnay, yeah. woody kind of Buttery, earthy, woody. Yeah. Yeah, this is quite interesting. So, of all the Mikellers... Mm-hmm. I would say that there are three now. Mikeller, De- Copenhagen, which is basically Europe. Mm-hmm. 
New York and San Diego. Yeah, because I mean there are there is like uh, McKellar Tokyo and there's McKellar. Uh, I think that those are just bars. Just bars. All right. I thought maybe they were producing in Tokyo, but maybe they aren't. Uh, um, maybe that that's definitely on my research list now because I thought they had not. But fair enough. Yeah, yeah fair yeah, enough. I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Uh, yeah. Because there is a Mikeller Stockholm, but there's mm-hmm. no Mikeller right. Stockholm beer. Uh, I feel like Mikeller San Diego is making the best beer out of the three. I'd have to agree to you. Have to agree with you on that one. I think because it's actually, I think it actually is owned by Mikeller. Yeah. Whereas the Mikeller New York is more licensing. Really? Yeah. I thought the exact opposite, that the San Diego was more uh, independent, doing their own thing. Well, I think, I think they're more independent, but I, think it's, but I think it's still owned by, outright owned by McKellar. I could be totally wrong. It could be everything is a, totally, a total licensing scheme, yeah, and then, like, he only just brands the name out to everyone, yeah. and they get the name, and they can do whatever the fuck they want, based on the, as long as they live up to a certain quality, and they follow the, the marketing standards that they have. Um, but I thought since San Diego was first in the U.S., yes, I assumed that he owned he owned it outright. Yeah, um, and it could be that he owns a New York one outright, but I think maybe it's the ballpark. Maybe that is the one that's a licensing name only. Uh-huh. Um, and I think most of his bars and other areas are people are buying into a franchise. I think most bars are uh, licensing. Yes, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when it comes to to uh, Mikeller New York, I have a, a slightly dirty confession to make, and I don't want to I don't want to poke my finger into a hornet's nest of uh, international beer brewers uh, brothers uh, vendettas against each other. Poke away. But Mikkel and Jeppe they have a serious feud going on and have been for years now. Well, I like, and it, yeah. yeah, I haven't gotten to my dirty secret yet. So. Uh, Evil Twin New York City mm-hmm. is cranking out, with a few exceptions, they're cranking out amazing beer. Yeah. There's one or two uh, examples that we, you and I have both disliked. But overall, it's just, whoa, whenever I see them, I need to get them. Yeah. But McKellar New York, I go, nah, maybe I'll let Stefan buy it. Thanks, man. Glad you let me take that bullet. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm the same way. I think that Mikel San Diego is definitely putting out just crazy good stuff. Yes. But Mikel New York, I'm like, mm, uh, yeah, well, I'll let Martin buy it. Yeah, yeah. I'll, just, like, I'll, look, I'll look up the review and see what it says. <laughs> and then Martin will buy like three of them, so I'm not worried about it. Three of them? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, I would say, I think the best thing I had out of, uh, I think it's San Diego, is the Tree Blood. Oh, that one's so, so good. So good. I've had the the three three varieties. I've had the rum, which is the, the regular release. Is that the regular one? The yeah, regular release is the rum. Yeah. And then they do a cognac. Yeah. And they do... It's whiskey. I, I think bourbon say. as well. Bourbon. Yeah, 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 bourbon. Whiskey, bourbon. Yeah, something like that. And they're all really good. They're really yeah, good. they're, they're really, really good. good. <laughs> uh, it's one of the best things I've had in a while. Um... Yeah, because they had the they had a tap takeover in um, during um, NBCC at uh, Michaela Victoria Gata. It was yeah. so good. I hope everyone has taken the everyone in Malmo is taking the uh, the opportunity to visit uh, the Michaela Pop Up Bar during yeah. This summer. So yeah, this summer if you're in Malmo and you're you're visiting or you're in Copenhagen and you're looking for a day trip, uh, come over. Go to uh, Fulkets Park. It's a very lovely, delightful park. There's yes. always something going on. There's usually free concerts. There's usually uh, tons of outdoor activities. There's a huge playground area. There's a couple of splash pools. Um, and they have a miniature golf. Uh, and they have a McKellar pop-up bar where they have, every Friday, they have a different tap takeover. So the past... Friday or two Fridays ago, they had um, Alchemist and they had War Pigs and you know which is the the Three Floyds McKellar yeah. um, bar out of uh, Copenhagen. 
So who knows what they're going to do next, but they do... I only bring it up because they had Tree Blood on for their premiere. Did they? Oh, I kind of wish I had to be there for that. It's so good. It is really good. Uh, so Mikeller San Diego, two thumbs up. Yeah. Uh, Mikeller Pop Up Bar uh, is a thumbs up when they have tap takeovers because uh, they're really good. They are really good. My only complaint is you're gonna pay a little bit. They're a little pricey. They're a little, a little proud of their beers, as they it, say. It's pricey, but for the the tap takeover, it's worth it. Yeah. But for a, a regular Mikeller Lager, it's not worth it. That's why I say that uh, you should go there for the tap takeovers and find stuff that you like. Yeah, but their tap, but their regular lager run from McKellar's, sixty-five sec. I mean, only that's not, yeah. Okay. For uh, forty centiliters, I mean that's not that's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. Um, so it's not. I mean, because like what you have to understand is is McKellar does this thing where they've got four base beers. They've got yeah. A lager, a brown ale, a uh, wit, a wit, and spontan. A spontan, yeah. And they just rebrand them based on the location that they are. So if you go to the McKellar Airport or McKellar Victoria Airport, Gata, wit, airport, bro. or yeah. you know the one, the tap, the pop up in, in in Malmo, it's the exact same beer you're going to get everywhere else. So if you've had it before, you're kind of like, it's actually pretty good, you know. I'll have that again. Yeah. Because you know what to get. And they just rebrand it based on the location that you're in. Which I think is it's kind of brilliant, but also kind of a scam. <laughs> yeah, kind of a scam. But this was a small side note because of Mikeller's San Diego, mm-hmm. which I think makes the best beer out of all mm-hmm. Mikeller's. This one is still super interesting, but I more, have no idea where to grade it. And the more it warms up, I think the more complexity lime. it develops. More lime. Yeah. Aromatic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. I'm going to give this. Oof. Three point seventy-five for me. Yep, I'm going to go three point seventy-five as well. I I think it's really good, and this is that's really high for you on a lager. I mean, that's like. Yeah. It's basically a five on your standards. <laughs> it's true, but this is pretty much not a lager anymore. No, I mean, there's so many adjuncts and there's... I don't really know what the difference between a golden lager and a regular lager is and how no. you differentiate between the two. And, and to be completely fair, uh, Untapped is mislabeling this as a golden ale. So even they have no idea what yeah. this is. But like the, the the lime, the coriander, and the oak, I mean, it just kind of creates this really pleasant, aromatic, aromic uh, feel. Almost gives you a slight coconutty, like coconut milk kind yeah, of essence I, to it. I get the buttery yeah. uh, note that you're feeling. Uh, I think it's just, it's really, really good uh, and very experimental for a lager. And I'm really glad to see that people are taking this what's considered a very traditional boring style yeah and trying to elevate it by pushing the hops pushing the adjuncts developing it in new ways and creating new things so i um yeah kudos it's fun all right so you can find us online at what's on tap um instagram facebook youtube itunes spotify wherever you can find fine quality podcasts online Until next time, keep drinking, you dum-dums. Don't stop! Don't stop! Don't stop!